Many of you might not know that I've been designing ships for Star Trek Online for the past two years or so, and Cryptic Studios, the company which produces Star Trek Online, has sponsored this video for me to just talk about my newest design for the game, the recently released Da Vinci class, which is available for purchase now on PC. This 25th century vessel was a successor to the Sabre class and was ultimately named after the USS Da Vinci, a Sabre class featured in the Starfleet Corps of Engineers novels. This was an exciting design brief to get, essentially design a 25th century Sabre class starship, something I like to do particularly when I'm redesigning or iterating an existing ship as I've typically done for Star Trek Online, is to find and create or reinforce shape relationships within the design. For instance, while looking at the original Sabre class, I noted that the design could essentially be distilled into three hexagons. I found another direction while interpreting the ship through something of a radial fan of curved lines. So using basically the same method, I'm able to create two completely different directions for the same ship, which both retain the DNA of the original while asserting their own unique vibes. Ultimately, we would go with the more organic interpretation, and from here, the more detailed technical work comes in. Interpreting my top-down orthographic sketch into three dimensions has an entirely new set of challenges, but I pretty much stick to my same methods, such as finding focus with concentric shapes, which you can see in the kinda, sorta, ever-narrowing rings from the outer edge to the central hull. And you can see how I use things like zigzag patterns to create contrast, making the ship more complex in a way that still essentially uses that same curved line. Furthermore, I separated the top and the bottom of the ship by using that same curved line to create concave shapes, to oppose and thus balance the convex shapes of the dorsal hull. Altogether, you get an admittedly strange ship for Starfleet, but one that does still retain all the essential components. But something I had in the back of my mind the entire time was how keenly it resembled both Cardassian and Jem'Hadar designs simultaneously, an association that didn't really concern me too much because it demonstrates a flexible Starfleet, willing to learn and adapt not just from longtime friends, but from former enemies as well. Indeed, this design association would play directly into the lore of Star Trek Online, which features ships designed by the Allied Cooperative Starship Development Board, a function of the Kitimer Alliance comprised of the Federation, the Romulans, the Klingons, and eventually even the Cardassians and the Dominion, and more. So the Da Vinci class can simultaneously resemble Federation ships, Cardassian ships, and Jem'Hadar ships, and not only fit right into the world, but actually be somewhat emblematic of that unprecedented era of cooperation. Now, as far as the ship's actual capabilities, I admittedly didn't have too much input on that, but I was told that the ship would support experimental technology, such as the Troyes Protocol, a cloaking style ability, which is a reference to the original USS Da Vinci's exploits, where they essentially made the planet of Troyes temporarily disappear. As I approached this angle of the design, I wanted to visually suggest that the Da Vinci class was the sort of starship that supported this experimental technology. I had the idea that I could communicate this by detailing the ship with just a tiny bit more exposed raw greebling than we're used to seeing on Federation starships. The original Sabre class already has some nice exposed equipment base, and I figured that I could take this just one step further. I consider that the technology required to give the ship its special abilities just wasn't yet to the point where it was as fully integrated as the other more standardized starship components. So this resulted in a lot of these open equipment bays and trenches just full of little bits of technology. The Da Vinci class also features what's known as a Gatling emitter, a fairly aggressive piece of technology that just pumps a target full of phaser blasts. And I think that ultimately these two abilities create an interesting dualism to the ship. It has this sort of aggressive and passive dual nature, both thematically with cloaking effects contrasted with rapid fire phaser systems, and visually, where we have a combination of these soft, gentle curves that combine to create blade like edges and points. So, depending on how you look at the ship, you can get some pretty different vibes. Altogether, I had a really fun time working on this project. So, I hope that you've enjoyed hearing about it and getting some of my mentality and design process behind this ship. This was my first sponsored video, and I want to make it clear that literally every single word and opinion in this video is completely my own. The Star Trek Online team gave me pretty much 
total freedom to just share my design and to talk about my work on the game in my own words. I've turned down a lot of sponsorships because no sponsor that has ever approached me has given me the freedom and flexibility that I've been given by the Star Trek online team. I think that's really admirable and I just had to mention that. It's a great team and for that reason I look forward to continue working with them in the future. Anyway, that's all for today. I hope you liked hearing about this ship because I really liked working on it and I'm proud of the result. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you next time.